I had to ask for that smooch. <laughs> what the hell is the only chance I'm going to get here? <laughs> you know, I'm about to uh, violate the first rule of this business. Whenever you're called upon to do something like this, the remarks that precede you always stimulate these ideas, and you, you get this temptation to go off on some tangent. But I, I, just must have, I just have to say that this is the one place I've done this I've, for that I really feel like there's not much left to say um, after uh, hearing Ellen's speech and Amy's. And you know what's interesting about that? When they got done, Ellen said, uh, thank you, Amy. And as Amy walked back, she turned around and said, thank you, Ellen. I can tell you this, at the graduation of the University of Vermont today, the graduating senior will not refer to the president by the first name. <laughs> I just think that's marvelous. And Ellen, the fact, I mean, I, I really don't have anything to say after this. Um, and the audience is probably pleased. Good, we'll get out of here sooner. <laughs> um, but when you, I didn't know it was that bad. I prepared, one of the Board of Trustees said, uh, 10 minutes max, 15, we drag you away kicking and screaming. So don't worry about it. Um, but the fact that she could mention the staff and the faculty that are, that are leaving and, and things that have done everything, that can never happen at a big school. And that's the fundamental message I'll give you today, that small is beautiful. And, 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 the, and the future is indeed in small and personal and humane and democratic. And progress doesn't mean getting bigger, it means getting smaller. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> However, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm driving up here this morning, coming down from the northern part of the state where it's colder in the winter, of course. <clears throat> Not as much snow. Um, I was reminded of uh, Daniel Webster's famous remark, a, a closing remark before the U.S. Supreme Court um, in 1818 when he argued the Dartmouth College case. He argued that, that case for an hour and 30 minutes without notes. Brilliant. And when he got done, uh, he looked up at the justices uh, and he said, sir, he said, as I have said before, sir, and I repeat now, it is a small college, Dartmouth College, but there are those of us, those of us that love it. And that is now one of the great Daniel Webster quotes. And I was thinking about Marlboro, this is certainly a college that one could easily love. Um, I, I'm going to ask you to trust me on one thing, and that is that I don't lie. Well, I might lie if I had to, but one of the worst things you can do in life, by the way, graduate, never tell a meaningless lie. If you've got to lie, tell a good one. But don't get caught in small lies. It just doesn't work out. And you'll feel good. You know, you don't have to worry about what you're saying all the time or where you've been. Um, but I did not know the Robert Frost connection before I prepared for my talk here. That's the truth. And, and that, again, I've been preempted. All I hear about now this morning is Robert Frost, and I wanted to begin with uh, one of his poems. Um, I really loved the comment in one of your publications that, uh, on the formation of the college. The, the, the college's founder went to Robert Frost and he said, hey, Bob, I want to stop a college, start a college. To me, that is success. When you can go to someone like Robert Frost and say, hey, Bob, that's amazing to me. Um, the poem I'd like to start with is that, of course, uh, led his book north of Boston. It's uh, called The Pasture Spring. And in it, he says, I'm going up to view the pasture spring. I'll only stop to wash the leaves away and wait to watch the water clear. I may. And then that wonderful last line. Uh, I shan't be gone long. You come too. And in that little poem, half of that poem, uh, is my message today. And one, one thing is that he's, he's not going to see a great mountain or a huge waterfall. He's going up to see a pasture spring. Work needs to be done. Um, smallness. Uh, the second thesis is democracy. You notice he's not going along. He wants somebody to come with him. And that's pure Aristotelian democracy, that human beings alone can never be human beings. We have to join collectives to establish our humanity. Then hermitry is insanity, in effect. And that leads to politics, which leads to democracy. Um, 
I'm going to do something else I shouldn't because I'm talking about town meeting and, and you have in your audience a, a true Vermont hero, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Uh, someone um, that any group of people that's talking about governing Vermont and preserving our democracy knows instantaneously. And a great pioneer in the technology of democracy, um, that's uh, Robert Gannett Sr., uh, who is here today. Um, and I think we owe him some applause. He's from Brattleboro and he has his clothes on. His son is here too and he's done all right. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about um, a couple of principles uh, now. Um, I should tell you at the beginning um, that this smallness comes from my own um, career, in a sense. This, this view of that small is beautiful. Um, I noticed, by the way, in your catalog that, that you don't pay much attention to, to um, high school records or grades or SAT when you select people, but my goodness, you certainly have a talented bunch of, of, of students coming in. Very good indeed. In fact, what is it, 33% of your incoming students are in the top 10th of their graduating class. That's pretty darn good, it's top 10th. I must tell you, however, and I'm not bragging, that I not only was in the top 10th, I was in the top 10 of my students in, the grad, in my graduating class. In fact, I came in third. That's not hard to do when there's only seven in the class. <laughs> I stand before you, too, as a, as, a, um, as a reject at the college that he applied to um, first. In fact, I'm the only. Um, tenured, named, full professor at a major American university that was rejected at the school that he applied to. At that very school, I was rejected at the University of Vermont. <laughs> and here I am, so there's hope. <laughs> um, I should tell you that when I got my doctorate at the University of Connecticut, uh, uh, and, and God knows I'm going to get into trouble here, the University of Connecticut's a great school. Um, but it's a big school and it's in Connecticut and I wanted to get home, you can understand, and so I put the robe in the, whatever the hang over your, what's that called again, the, uh, what they hang over the back? The, yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> and I put it, and I lost it. So whenever I go to a college thing like this at UVM or anywhere else, I don't have colors. So I went and bought some at the UVM store. I'm going to go home and throw them away, and I promise you this. If I ever appear again in, in this context, and I certainly will at UVM just as a professor, I shall wear the Marlboro colors. These really mean to me. Not that I don't love UVM. Is this being recorded? I love UVM. But <laughs> 